Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with integer solutions. Actually, positive integer solutions. m and k are positive integers, and we're looking for solutions to this equation. m squared equals n cubed plus k squared. So I'll be presenting two methods. Even though the methods are somewhat similar, uh, they could still be considered different methods. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to be taking a look at this expression and I see uh, squares on either side and a cube with one of the squares. So it's better if we put the squares together so that we can turn it into, you know, something nicer. So for that purpose, I'm going to isolate the n cubed and write it as n cubed equals m squared minus k squared. Great. Now, I have m n cubed. So the question is, can we write a perfect cube as a difference of two squares? The answer is yes, because this equation has integer or positive integer solutions. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take advantage of an identity here. Instead of n cubed, I can just write the following. So consider the sum of integer cubes, the consecutive integers. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about. 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus dot 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 all the way up to n cubed. Now I'd like to get n cubed so I'm going to be subtracting from this the sum that contains all the cubes all the way up to n minus 1 cubed. So I'm going to exclude n cubed because I want the difference to be n cubed, right? So this is equal to n cubed no doubt about it, right? Because everything is going to cancel out and you're going to end up with n cubed. And notice that we have n minus 1 cubed right here, right before the n cubed. Anyways, so this is an identity that we can use. Now what is so good about this is that we were able to write a perfect cube as a difference of two sums. But the question is, are those sums difference of, well, no, I shouldn't say that. Are those sums perfect squares? Because we do want to get a difference of two squares right here. So let's see. If you remember the formula for the sum of uh, consecutive integer cubes, then you'll have the following. The first one is going to be n times n plus 1 divided by 2 quantity squared. And the next one is n minus 1 times n divided by 2 quantity squared. Now, if you remember, uh, we have this famous identity, which is actually really, really cool, that if you have the sum of cubes, you can basically sum of the consecutive integers and then just square that sum. So for example, 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed is the same as 1 plus 2 plus 3 to the second power. Both of them are going to equal 36. But this is not a proof. I just gave you an example. Anyways, so what happens is this is equal to n cubed. And now we were able to write n cubed as a difference of two squares, which is really cool. So this means that my equation can be written as you know, remember this was my difference of two squares. The first one is going to be my, you know, this one is going to be the m value. And this one is just going to be the k value. Therefore, we found solutions to this equation. How? Well, if you are looking for uh, solutions like m and k, then, then, then they're going to look like the following. m can be written as n times n plus 1 divided by 2. n is just going to be n. And k can be written as n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So let's go ahead and replace n with something so we can see what the solutions look like. For example, suppose n equals, since we're looking for um, positive solutions, obviously n needs to be greater than 1. So the minimum value we can use is n equals 2. Let's go ahead and replace n with 2. That's going to give me 2 times 3 divided by 2, which is a 3. And then n is going to be a 2. And k is going to be... 2 times 1 divided by 2, which is 1. So 3 to 1 is going to satisfy this equation. You can always plug it in to see that it works. So these are going to be my m and k values, 3 to 1. If n is something else, like let's say n is equal to 5, then you're going to get the following. 5 times 6 divided by 2 is equal to 15. Then 15 comma 5 and 5 times 4 divided by 2 is equal to 10. So 15, 5, 10 is also going to be another solution. Obviously, there are infinitely many solutions. As long as n is a positive integer, we basically get all the solutions from here. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at 
the second method. And like I said earlier, the second method is somewhat similar to the first method, but it's still a different approach, somewhat. Okay, now the difference uh, comes from the fact that in the first example, we had to write n cubed uh, using the, the sum of cubes, like kind of like a different identity. In the second method, we're going to follow a slightly different approach, even though we are taking advantage of difference of two squares. Actually, we are really taking advantage of a difference of two squares. So here's how it goes. I'm going to start with the difference of two squares and write it as m plus k and m minus k. And then I'm going to set it equal to n cubed. Of course, n cubed can also be factored out. So let's go ahead and factor it as n squared times n. Obviously, n doesn't have to be a prime number. n can be any number. And you can break it down in different ways. But here's what we can get from here. m plus k, obviously, since m, k, m, and k are positive integers, uh, m plus k is going to be greater than m minus k. Think about it. The difference is going to be less than the sum. So I can kind of compare these two and say that, OK, what happens if m plus k is equal to n squared and m minus k is equal to n? Is that the only way to do it? Something to think about, right? OK, are there any other solutions? Something to think about. Anyways, let me just proceed with this method. So from here, I do get a nice system of equations. And let's go ahead and solve this equation for m and k. So we're going to treat n kind of like a um, constant here. Let's go ahead and add these. From here, k is going to cancel out. So we're going to end up with 2m equals n squared plus n. And if you divide both sides by 2, you're going to get m equals n squared plus n divided by 2. And obviously, if you subtract these two equations, you're going to get the k value. Or you can just plug it in, m, and solve for k. Doesn't really matter. From there, you're going to get n squared minus n over 2. And this is basically going to give us the same solutions as before. That shouldn't be a surprise, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.